I'm sure everyone here knows about icebergs, and if you don't, welcome out of that rock you've been living under. Icebergs are basically big images with a ton of information on them, where as you go down the list of information, the info becomes either more obscure, sometimes more dark, or sometimes obscure and dark. Uh, whichever way the person who made the iceberg decides to set it up. That's basically everything you need to know to go into this video. So, without further ado, let's begin. I'd like to say before we begin though, while this video is about a children's TV channel and shows and stuff that are aimed at kids, the video itself is not for kids. Based on copper laws, I would like to suggest that anyone under the age of 13 would stop watching, uh, but if you stay here, uh, it's not my fault. Nicktoons Unite Nicktoons Unite is a video game for the sixth generation of consoles, and it's the first in the series of Nicktoons games. Uh, in these games, multiple Nickelodeon characters join together to fight whatever evil shows up in that game. It's a classic with a lot of people and holds a lot of nostalgia for a lot of the people who grew up during this time. Nickbox Nickbox is a subscription box made by Nickelodeon and Culturefly, mostly themed around classic Nicktoons. They also have a Spongebob-specific themed one on their site, and now recently just added an Avatar box. Kids' Choice Awards The Kids' Choice Awards is a yearly award show hosted by Nickelodeon. They cover many different things such as movies, TV, music, and sports, and they let the kids decide who gets the awards. Kids' Choice, having started in 1988, has been going on for 33 years now. Nick Movies Back in 1993, Nickelodeon struck a deal with Fox to make movies based on Doug, Ren and Stimpy, and Rugrats. This deal would soon fall through, however, when Viacom acquired Paramount Pictures in 1994. Then in 1995, Nickelodeon movies would be founded, and then in 1996, their first movie would be released, which we'll talk about soon. In 1998, Nick would release the Rugrats movie, which would begin the big boom of Nick movies. While Nick movies has slowed down immensely, it is still making movies today, with two more movies in the works as of 2021. Snick Snick, or Saturday Night Nickelodeon, was a two-hour programming block geared toward general audiences. Uh, the block ran from 1992 to 2004 and went through many changes during that time period. In the end, it was replaced by a Saturday Night version of Teen Nick. Moose and Z. Moose, a yellow moose, and his pal Z, a blue owl, were the host of a Nick channel named Noggin, which was an education kids channel made by Nickelodeon and Sesame Street Workshop. They would take up hosting the daytime block from 2003 after the original host, Feet Face, was removed. Uh, Noggin would end in 2009 and be replaced by Nick Jr. Alright, so while editing this video, I actually came across the fact that Noggin exists again? Uh, it came back in 2015 with the original logo, Moose and Z, it all was back, and it was made as an app, the Noggin app. Uh, and that lasted all the way up until 2019, when the app was retooled with a new logo using like the new Nickelodeon font. They got rid of Moose and Z, they got rid of the Noggin original shows, and same with uh, the Noggin channel, I guess. Uh, the app has become just uh, Nick Jr. shows, and I guess shows from foreign producers. Um, which is sad because I was really excited the fact that Noggin, the, the thing I grew up with, was back for kids, and it's basically gone again. Not Just Cartoons Not Just Cartoons was a song bump made for Nicktoons that ran from 2002 to 2003. Not just cartoons. Where's it? Arnold, Helga, Phoebe, Gerald, Sid, Grandpa, Stinky, Harold, SpongeBob, Patrick, Sandy, Keep the Krabby Patties Handy, Squidward. The song's basic idea was just to kind of differentiate the idea of Nickelodeon's cartoons to the old, you know, old fashioned, normal cartoons. I enjoy the song. Different channels. Throughout Nick's time span, they have had many different channels, each having its own reason to exist. Uh, they had the Nickelodeon channel, which was created in 1979, Noggin created in 1999, Nicktoons created in 2002, Nick Jr. created in 2009, which took over Noggin, Teen Nick, which was also created in 2009. Along with that, they had Nick 2 and Nick Jr. 2. These were delayed feeds, which would basically just be different based on time zone, allowing you a second chance to watch episodes you may have missed earlier in the day. Slime. 
Since the invention of Nickelodeon, slime has been a very important part of its image. Starting in the show You Can't Do That on TV, it's been used in basically all of Nick's game shows and even more stuff such as the Kids Choice Awards. Nick Games Nick Games is the name given to the Nickelodeon's video game publishing part of the company. Originally just going by Nickelodeon, it was first used in 1994 in the Ariel Monsters game. It stayed as Nickelodeon until 2005 when it was changed to Nick Movies, yet some games used the Nick Movies logo without the Movies sign, and at the same time, in 2002, it became the Nick Games logo we know and love, being used in a lot of Nick-based games, so they used both of them for different stuff uh, up until 2007 where it was used for the final time at least as I could find, in Spongebob Squarepants Underpants Slam, being replaced by a splat Nick logo until 2009, when the modern Nick logo would take over. Oh Yeah Cartoon Oh Yeah Cartoons was a cartoon short-based show that ran from 1998 to 2001. The show would play multiple short cartoons per episode, many of which would end up being made into full shows such as Fairly Odd Parents, Chalk Zone, and My Life as a Teenage Robot. Nick Jr. Face Face was Nick Jr.'s mascot from 1994 to 2004. Face would be used to announce the upcoming episodes and sometimes interact with the Nick Jr. characters. A lot of people bring up how they were afraid of Face as a kid, and I remember reading someone talk about a nightmare in which Face tried to destroy the world. Uh, Face ended up being redesigned in 2003, and many of the shorts from this era are actually just missing. Nick at Night Nick at Night is the evening block on the Nickelodeon channel, starting at 9pm and going to 7am. It's sort of Nickelodeon's Adult Swim, but instead of like, adult cartoons and very like, risque shows, it just has older sitcoms aimed at more mature audiences, like basically young adults and up. Nick at Night aired a lot of older stuff when it started, you know, things like my Three Sons, The Donna Reed Show, Dennis the Menace, Dick Van Dyke Show, Adventures of Superman, just a ton of older sitcoms. Uh, but a little bit later, around the 2000s, they started to add in some newer stuff. Full House, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, George Lopez. The block is still going today, but within this year, it is only airing four shows. Friends, Mom, Young Sheldon, and Mike and Molly even though it used to air like 23 shows within the 2010s. But the fact that they only air four shows within this block is just really weird to me. Butch Hartman. Butch Hartman is the creator of some classic Nick shows such as Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom. However, he isn't on here because of his work on these shows, but instead because of his recent history. Uh, recently, Butch has been up to some weird things. First off, he has a YouTube channel, and a big part of his drawing is old characters aged up, or characters from other media, and the drawings just aren't very good. <laughs> uh, it's very strange seeing how his old stuff looked great, and his new stuff looks not great. Um, they are so far from the original art styles, and a lot of them look like a teen who likes anime too much drew them. Uh, he also tried to make a new streaming service called Axis that was aimed at Christian families. However, the only thing that come of it was a test site that was up for a day or two. I'll link some more videos in the description that talk more about Butch Hartman, um, because there's just a lot to it. Worldwide Day of Play the Worldwide Day of Play is a three-hour event held on the Nick channels every year since 2004, and it was only skipped in 2020 for obvious reasons. The idea is to push kids to go play outside for a few hours instead of watching TV, but it usually just drove kids to switch the channel to either Cartoon Network or Disney Channel. Stick Stickly Stick Stickly was a Nick mascot in the 90s. He was a popsicle stick with googly eyes, a yellow jelly bean nose, and a small mouth. He was best known as the host of Nick in the Afternoon, which was a programming block that aired each summer in 1995 to 1998. Red Mist Red Mist is a very famous creepypasta about a lost episode of Spongebob that shows Squidward killing himself and a lot of gore, and the story is told from the perspective of an intern at Nick who finds the tape. So Doug. Doug was a cartoon originally aired on Nickelodeon. Nick, however, was not the producers, but just the distributors. Doug was actually produced and owned by Jumbo Pictures, and Disney ended up buying Jumbo, and in the process, they bought Doug, so it got moved over to Disney. 
Uh, but Nick does still own the 52 episodes originally produced for Nick, so those episodes are separate from the Disney ones, and it's just a really interesting like piece of Nick and Disney history, the fact that this show exists from both channels. Hey Arnold Movies there were two Hey Arnold movies, Hey Arnold the Movie and Hey Arnold the Jungle Movie. You see, back in 1998, Nick offered series creator Craig Bartlett the chance to make two movies. A direct-to-TV movie called Arnold Saves the Neighborhood, and a theatrical movie called The Jungle Movie. The Jungle Movie would answer the questions left over in Season 5, mainly what happened to Arnold's parents, and would basically be like an end to the series. While in production, though, Nick decided to release Arnold Saves the Neighborhood in theaters as the Hey Arnold movie. But the movie was a commercial and critical failure, causing the Jungle Movie to just be canned. And that's how it stayed until 2017 when the Jungle Movie would finally be made and would be released to fans' delights. Nick Mom Nick Mom was a nighttime block on the Nick Jr. channel aimed at parents. It ran from October 1st, 2012 to September 28th, 2015. The programming was made up of original comedy shows including Nick Mom Night Out and Take Me to Your Mother and reruns of Nick at Night shows. One specific program was What Was Carol Brady Thinking, which was reruns of The Brady Show in which Carol Brady would come in and say things, usually things that could be very sexual and vulgar, on Nick Jr. Now this would be fine if this was on a channel more like just regular Nickelodeon, you know, people don't keep Nickelodeon on for their kids at night, but Nick Jr. is something that people enjoy having for if their kid wakes up in the middle of the night, so that they can put something on in the background while they try to help their kid go to sleep. And now it's talking about orgasms, penises, vaginas, and foreplay. And this is even worse if you happen to be living in somewhere like California. You see, Nick Jr. doesn't have a separate airing for Central. If something's airing at 9 o'clock over in New York, it's airing at 6 o'clock in California. And this block started 9 to 10, which meant in California, it started at 6 or 7. So not only is this now cutting out of time that a lot of parents use to help their toddlers go to sleep, or if they were sick, help them get back to sleep after waking up in the middle of the night at 2 a.m., it's also airing way earlier than it's supposed to in other areas, meaning that kids would be awake at a normal time and hear Carol Brady talk about Mr. Brady's dick. Netflix. In recent years, Nick and Netflix have been working together a lot, uh, with multiple classic Nick shows being put on there, mostly the live action ones, uh, along with movies such as Invadism, Enter the Floor Pits, and Rocker's Modern Life Static Cling. But with Paramount Plus, though, I don't expect to see much more of this to happen. Clockman. In the 1980s, Nick had a show called Pinwheel. It was similar to Sesame Street in some ways, using puppets and humans along with short animated segments. One of these segments was Clockman. In 2012, user Commander Santa posted a thread on Bungie.net's off-topic forums in which he described the creepy old cartoon he had seen years ago. The short involved a young boy laying in his bed who gets snatched up by the Clockman, a discolored, unkempt entity that emerges from the wall clock above the child's bed at the stroke of midnight. The boy, after being taken on an eerie adventure, is subsequently returned to his room before sunrise. This would spark a huge search that would end in 2019 when the clip was uploaded to the internet. If you'd like to know more about this, I'll link a blame it on Jorge. Yes, it's Jorge, that's how it's pronounced. Anyways, I'll link his video in the description and in the cards. Cube. Cube was an experimental two-way multi-programmed cable television system. It offered 10 broadcast TV channels, 10 pay-per-view channels billed monthly, and 10 channels that included interactive services. One of these channels was C-3, which would air the show Pinwheel. After Cube started to go under, Warner Cable saw that Pinwheel could be a popular thing and decided to make it a national channel, which would become Nickelodeon. Adventure Time Pilot. In 2008, Nickelodeon had a show called Random Cartoons, in which they would show animated shorts. It's a lot like Oh Yeah cartoons. One of these shorts was actually the pilot for Adventure Time. Being a pilot, the show's art is like way more simple, uh, and also Finn sounded way younger, and fun fact, the voice actor for Finn in the pilot is actually the younger brother of the voice actor for Finn in the actual show. Um, anyways, the show wasn't picked up by Nick, uh, being turned down twice for being 
too weird. Uh, but luckily Cartoon Network picked it up later, and we got the show we loved. Crash Nebula. Crash Nebula is a cartoon and comic within the Fairly Odd Parents show. There was even an episode in which we got to see Crash Nebula, and that was actually a backdoor pilot for a Crash Nebula show. However, it was never picked up because it just didn't focus test well. It was also pitched as a movie to Paramount, but they felt it was way too similar to Sky High, and so Crash Nebula was scrapped. Zoe 101 Pregnancy it has forever been a widely accepted theory that Zoe 101 was ended because Jamie Lynn Spears, the actress for Zoe, was pregnant. However, Jamie herself said that the show ended six months before she was even pregnant. One of the biggest theories, however, all about this is that a certain producer, whose name starts with D, ends with Schneider, uh, was actually the one who got her pregnant. I, I don't know how much proof there is about this. There's, you know, nothing out there. Um... But we'll talk about him more in the bottom of the iceberg, and that'll explain why this theory exists. NFL F-Bomb In 2021, Nickelodeon began airing NFL games through its Nick NFL wildcard program. In January, during a game between the Saints and the Bears, a player happened to say fuck, and that got aired on Nickelodeon. F hilarious. It's great. Avatar Book 4 while Avatar is being made, it was heavily questioned whether they wanted to end in Season 3 or make a Book 4 and continue the story. The original plan for Book 4 would be that Aang and Zuko would go searching for Zuko's mom and also if there were any airbenders left. They ended up deciding against Book 4 though and preferred to make a movie that would tell the same story. However, Nickelodeon didn't like the movie idea and instead requested a new show, which then became Legend of Korra. Harriet the Spy Harry the Spy was a 1996 film made by Nickelodeon, and was actually the first Nickelodeon film ever. It was based on a novel by the same name, and I put it on here because I just thought it was weird that the first ever Nickelodeon made movie was based on a novel, instead of being based on the cartoons, but I guess they wanted it to stand out from the cartoons. Spongebob spin-offs. Oh boy. For a very long time, Nick has wanted to make Spongebob spin-offs, with multiple being rumored and then disappearing for years. Only recently has it actually happened, with Camp Coral and the Patrick Star Show. Now, when these were announced, there was an uproar of anger from Spongebob fans, many bringing up how Steven Hillenburg had stated he doesn't want spin-offs. However, this isn't really true. Hillenburg was asked in an interview about spin-offs, and he stated specifically that he doesn't think they would work given the example of how Patrick on his own just wouldn't work. He's too goofy crazy. He never, though, stated that he will not allow them or anything like that. Now, would he be happy with Camp Coral and Patrick's Star Show? No, not at all. One of the other people who worked on the show with him stated that. But this, is, this idea that Nick defiled his grave by making these shows is just dumb. They try to, people try to say that they waited for him to die to make them, and that's just not true. These shows were in production before he died, along with past shows that were attempted to be put into production. And really, the only reason it worked now was because Paramount Plus happened. If Paramount Plus happened a year or two ago, these shows would exist, because in the end, Hillenburg has no decision on whether these shows are produced. He doesn't have creative control, especially after he left. It was all on Nickelodeon. Rugrats Theory. Oh boy, one of the oldest theories to ever exist is the it's all in their head theory. And Rugrats is not a stranger to this type of theory. Called the Rugrats Never Happen Theory, it states that none of the babies in Rugrats actually exist, but they are all instead figments of Angelica's imagination as a result of her parents' negligence. Chucky died with his mother, which explains how much of a nervous wreck his father is. Tommy was a stillborn baby, which explains why his father, Stu, was always in the basement making toys for the son he never had. And finally, the Deviles had an abortion to compensate for not knowing the sex of the baby. Angelica invented twins in her head. One boy, one girl. Um, this isn't true. The creators have said that. This is a really dumb theory. <laughs> like, all in their, it was all in their head theories. But it, it gets brought up every time. Bye Bye Beavers. Bye Bye Beavers was supposed to be the season finale to Angry Beavers. In the episode, the Beavers received mail alerting to them the fact that the show's been cancelled, with Norbert then having to break the news to Daggett that they are both, in fact, cartoon characters. 
They go on to break the fourth wall, with the voice actors calling each other by their real names and criticizing the fact that after cancellation, cartoons continue to rerun without any payment being received by the creators. Nick was not happy with the episode because of its criticism of reruns and because it broke a rule that Nick had that shows weren't allowed to allude to the fact that they are ending. The audio would end up being released on YouTube and it's still watchable today. We'll be right back with more Nickelodeon. Rated everyone. This just in. The battle for Bikini Bottom will not be fought. It will be play. Help SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy foil Plankton's evil scheme to take down Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob SquarePants, the battle for Bikini Bottom, now available on your favorite game system. Welcome to Name That Happy Meal. Thank you. Name That Happy Meal that comes with this clapper or this microphone. Huh? It's McDonald's Nickelodeon Happy Meal. Each one you buy comes with one of four fine prizes. Thanks, you've been great to test it. Now we're back with more Nickelodeon. Camp Coral, Patrick Star Show, Time Paradoxes. Within both Camp Coral and the Patrick Star Show, there are multiple things that just don't make sense with the SpongeBob timeline. In Camp Coral, we have things like Sandy being around when SpongeBob was a kid, even though we saw them meet within the first episode of season one. Uh, then in Patrick Star Show, we have things like SpongeBob and Squidward not working at the Krusty Krab, Patrick's family being entirely different, and some other stuff. And all this would cause timeline paradoxes akin to what the TVA would deal with. But now, interestingly, at the end of the first episode of the Patrick Star Show, the dad says, who is he again? And the mother says, I have no idea. Like when they're talking about Patrick, which brings up a lot of questions. Cause like, obviously those aren't his real parents, which does connect to that, but still SpongeBob and Patrick aren't working at the Krusty Krab. It's, it's just a very weird. We also have Camp Coral mention in one episode that Sandy was sent back in time to keep some, like the, the SpongeBob or the Krabby Patty formula from getting out and SpongeBob from fucking stuff up or something like that. It's weird. It's just weird. I, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> time Capsule In 1992, Nickelodeon made a time capsule and allowed viewers to vote on what should be put in it. On April 30th of 1992, the capsule was buried and is not to be opened until April 30th of 2042, 50 years after it was buried. GAC Definition This is pretty simple. Uh, basically, GAC used to be used as a slang for cocaine. And it's also a, a like a Nickelodeon slime thing, so. Cry Baby Lane. On October 28th, 2000, Nickelodeon aired a horror movie called Cry Baby Lane. The movie starts off with a story about a pair of conjoined twins that a farmer and his wife had. The farmer believes that one baby is evil and the other is good, and after that, and after they get sick and die, the farmer split the children and buried the good one in the cemetery and the evil one at the end of a dirt road. The dirt road would then be named Crybaby Lane because if you're out there late at night, you can hear the cries of the evil child. After the movie was shown on Halloween, it was never aired again, which led to a ton of people vaguely remembering the movie and having no clue what it was. Of course, this was then becoming lost media, and for years this movie would be a myth to many. People thinking it never existed, creepy pauses being made about it. And the theory was that the movie was banned by Nick after too many parents complained about how scary it was. But in 2011, a Reddit user named Fire Salad Peach would upload a VHS recording of the entire movie. Later, Teen Nick would re-air it with a bunch of marketing about it being Nick's darkest secret, and while many still believe that it was banned by Nick, uh, there's no evidence that shows that, and Nick just apparently wasn't happy with the movie, and decided it just wasn't worth airing again. Kablan Episode 29 Episode 29 is the theorized episode of Kablan. This all started when TV.com, a now defunct episode, showed an episode 29 of Kablam. The plot was that Henry and June were giving out awards and say goodbye to the viewers, with the episode ending with June giving Henry a kiss. This is however debunked by the creator saying it never existed and Henry and June's relationship was platonic, and the real episode 29 was just another episode. Quarantine Crab Quarantine Crab was a season 12 episode of Spongebob that was banned in America for being too similar to the COVID quarantine. 
It most likely will be aired at some point, but who knows when. And it really is all just a coincidence. Uh, I remember seeing some people try to be like, Ooh, Nickelodeon knew COVID was happening, but like, quarantines are a thing that happen all the time. <laughs> And they just happened to make an episode a year or two before COVID that coincided with COVID. That's all. The Cartoon Network Invasion. On April 8, 2004, Nickelodeon aired an ad in which Cartoon Network characters came on the screen and plugged the channel before being chased off by a security guard. There isn't much to it, really. Uh, just the fact that it happened is really cool. It's not something you see much, and a lot of people remember it very fondly. Chalk Zone's planned ending. Before Chalk Zone was cancelled, it had a planned ending episode in which Snap realizes that Rudy has to grow up and he will visit Chalk Zone less and less until not at all. The co-creator Bill Burnett said that the episode would have been a great ending to the series, but it never happened. Constant Pain 9-11 Issues Constant Pain is a pilot made for Nick in 2001. It was an anime-inspired diesel punk action show. The pilot was aired and seemed well received, but it just never got picked up because Nick thought it was a little too close to 9-11 to show the type of action that was in the show. Ant Bully Killed Jimmy Neutron This entry is not about how the one and only Ant Bully murdered Jimmy Neutron in cold blood and was found guilty in a court of law, but it's actually about how the movie Ant Bully flopped so hard that it caused DNA production to shut down, which meant DNA could no longer produce Jimmy Neutron. So that's fun. Animaniacs slash Pinky in the Brain intros. For a period of time, Animaniacs and Pinky the Brain were aired on Nickelodeon, and when it was, they made custom intros that showed the Nick logo throughout the original intros, which is just really cool. Helga's mom is an alcoholic. There are many points in Hair Arnold where Helga's mom is shown time to be drunk or shown with a hangover. Uh, she passes out all the time and disoriented when she wakes up, slurs her word, and Miriam is often shown making smoothies, which is how she names her alcoholic beverages, and seems to be emotionally attached to her blender. I don't think it's ever been talked about from the creators, but it is very implied. Cat Scratch Pilot This was a rumored pilot for the show Cat Scratch. Uh, it was lost for a very long time until finally the creator Doug Tenapple uploaded the pilot on Vimeo. However, it wasn't actually a pilot and instead was a one and a half minute long test animation. Johnny Quasar this is the name for an early demo for what would become Jimmy Neutron. In the first animation, Johnny looks very different from Jimmy, however Goddard looks exactly the same. And then in the second animation, Johnny begins to resemble Jimmy more. They were lost for a while, but are now available on YouTube to watch. 3D Groove Games Around the mid-2000s, many companies partnered with 3D Groove to make games. They could be played in desktop or browser. Nickelodeon had 21 games made with 3D Groove. And while they were lost at one point, all but one game has fully been found. Black Licorice Black Licorice was a Halloween Flash game. In the game, you give candy to trick-or-treaters, and as you give them candy, you soon run out of the caramel pieces, and all you have left is Black Licorice. When you give a kid the black licorice, they get angry, their faces become creepy, and that's really it. It's not that scary as it is all, but apparently it scared tons of kids. Captain Mikey, the MTV pilot. Originally, Captain Mikey was pitched to MTV before being picked up by Nickelodeon. The pilot was lost for a while until 2017 when it was found and uploaded to YouTube. Uh, the most interesting part is how different the show looked. Like, it wasn't 100% entirely different, but it just had a very different art style to it, and when being picked up on Nickelodeon, I guess they refined the art style and changed it. Kurt Cobain, Ren and Stimpy Song In 2017, Billy West stated in an interview that at some point, Kurt Cobain, before Nirvana fame, came to Ren and Stimpy studio wanting to make a song for the show. Executives didn't like the song, and John Kay was annoyed with his arrogance, so it got thrown out. This, however, has no real evidence to back it up. Kurt Cobain died in 1994, and his estate has not commented on the rumor, and John Kay stated he had no recollection of the story and had never heard of the rumor. Ned Declassified High School Survival Guide Soon after the end of the original Ned's Declassified, Nick started work on a sequel series set in high school. Many of the actors were busy with other shows, though, so they couldn't get everyone back, and they just canned it. Ren and Stimpy Spongebob Short 
Originally, there was supposed to be a Ren and Stimpy short that played before the second Spongebob movie. This was however canned for reasons that we'll talk about at the bottom of the iceberg, uh, but to put it simply, John Kay is not a good person, and Nick cut ties with him. The Club The Club was an old Nickelodeon MMO browser game. It was shut down in 2014 when Nick redesigned the website, and now it's lost to time. A lot of people remember it fondly though, but with nothing to be found of it, I doubt we're ever going to see it again. Very Aggressive Vegetables This was a series of 30 second shorts shown on Nick UK. While it's thought 6 shorts were made, only 3 have ever been found as of writing this. Cat Dog Saves Mean Bob This was a cancelled game for the PS1, and not much is known about it sadly, we just know that it was developed by Robert Lamoureau, I think I'm pronouncing that right, um, and he worked on the game while he was also working on the PC game Cat Dog Quest for the Golden Hydrant. Other than that, we just know it existed. Rugrats Incredible So this was originally towards the bottom of the iceberg, but I moved it up because it's more widely known now, and also I wanted to introduce one of the first steps of darkness of this iceberg, here in the bottom of the middle. So, also I'm going to start with a trigger warning because this is a bit hard to listen to. Um, there will be talk about abuse and incest. If this is something that you do not want to hear about, skip ahead to the timestamp on the screen. Um, and yeah. So we start the story off with a thing called a storyboard jam, which is a storyboard passed around by the writers and artists and people like that. Um, and it's usually like a way to blow off steam. You just write something funny and dumb. Everyone laughs at it. It gets thrown away. And this storyboard started off also as a way to blow off steam. Russell has recounted that the first page of the storyboard consisted of Angelica being a bitch to Tommy. So Tommy gets her a drink in the kitchen and puts dog food and Drano in it. He then toddles back to Angelica. Stu then comes in, hits Dee Dee, causes Tommy to fall and begin to twitch, makes sexual remarks to Angelica. This ended up snowballing into incest scenes and just disgusting things. Uh, only one page has been recovered, and I hope we never see the rest. One last thing, uh, Steve Russell in 2020 was accused by at least two people, that's all I've been able to find so far, of grooming them when they were younger. Uh, one was 15, 16, other I can't find age for. Um, and yeah, there's photographic evidence and everything, so don't even try to doubt it. Uh, yeah, it, it happened. So there's that. Looney Tunes on Nickelodeon. Looney Tunes on Nickelodeon was a program that aired Looney Tunes shorts on Nickelodeon, obviously. It lasted from September 1988 to September of 1999, and it currently holds the record for longest lasting non-original show to air on Nick. Me and My Friends This was the original pilot for the Backyard Against. This version was actually live action and had big mascot-like costumes and puppets, sort of like uh, Teletubbies. It looked very interesting, but sadly, the full thing is lost, and only a small clip is left, plus like, two pictures. So, hopefully we find it one day. Nickelodeon Japan Nick Japan was exactly as it sounds, the Japanese version of Nick. It started in 1998, but as time went on, viewership declined, and the channel was taken off air in 2009. The sign-off is the real thing of interest, since it's been lost since it's airing, there are a few fake ones you can find on YouTube, but we currently do not have the real sign-off. So it seems like the shutdown has been found uh, twice, actually, because of different cable companies and stuff. Uh, what people saw is a bit different depending on the pro provider, um, and both of them are pretty old. It's just finally been confirmed through outside evidence that these are the real ones. So that's pretty cool. Bobby the Lizard Boy this is an old Nickelodeon short from 2002. There isn't anything really special about it, it just isn't super well known, and it's really good, has some really funny stuff. It's on YouTube, I highly suggest you go watch it. Cartoon Lost and Found In 1990, Nick at Night had a special all about lost cartoons from the past starring Adam West. Ironically, this ended up becoming lost itself, staying lost until September 2020 when an anonymous user uploaded it to the Internet Archive. 101% Spooky Whizbang. 
This was a Halloween block back in 1999. It was hosted by Henry and June from Kablam. We currently only have one of the shorts from this block, but we do have a few small clips from another one and some pictures. Our Real Monsters Movie for years, an Ario Monster movie had been rumored. It was claimed that it went in production in 1998 and then was cancelled for being too dark, but there was no concrete evidence of this. Then in 2016, a person would get into contact with Classmate Supo through their official Facebook account, where they would then confirm that the film never formally entered production. It was in planning stages, but no one knows how far in those planning stages it ever went. Binya 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 was a polywog character on the show Gullah Gullah Island. The show is something I remember as a kid actually, but I haven't heard anyone talk about it. It was really weird experiencing again too. Like, I vaguely had a memory and when I saw it, so much stuff came back to me. But like I said, it's just not really talked about. What do animals do when humans aren't watching? This is a lost test pitch from 2000, made by DNA Productions of O Entertainment. It would go on to be renamed Barnyard and become a movie and series. Jimmy Neutron Interruptions In 2001, Nick had a promotional interruption set where characters from Jimmy Neutron would come on screen and change the broadcast in some way. Uh, one of the most popular ones is when they turned a Spongebob scene into puppets, which I remember seeing on YouTube and thought it was hilarious, and I wish Nick did stuff like this more often. Spongebob Squarepants and Nicktoons Gravjet Racing this was a cancelled Xbox Live Arcade racing game from 2009. There's an early build made which is lost right now, uh, and we have some screenshots and a few animation tests left, but that's it. The Original 8 in 1989, Nickelodeon decided they wanted to move into cartoons, creating what they dubbed Nicktoons. They commissioned eight pilots and planned to choose four of the best pilots to turn into series. However, they only ended up picking three. The eight pilots consisted of The Crowfell Chronicles, Big Beast Quintet, Trash, The Weasel Patrol, Thunder Lizards, Doug Can't Dance, Tommy Pickles and the Great White Thing, and Ren and Stimpy in Big House Blues. And I think it's obvious, but the Doug one, the Tommy Pickles one, and the Ren and Stimpy ones are the one that got chosen, and the pilots for the other five are lost to this day, and it's even kind of hard to figure out what the eighth one is. Most stuff only shows seven, and doesn't talk about Thunder Lizards as one of these original pilots, which I found very strange. The Patakis. This was a planned spin-off to Hey Arnold, focused on Helga's teenage years, and it was supposed to be on Nick at Night. In the show, it was going to be stated that Helga and Arnold had dated in the past, but it ended badly. Uh, Arnold would have moved away, with no reason being figured out before the show was canned. Uh, and other than that, it would just take the characters, age them up a bit, and put them in new experiences. The Butcher in 2019, Reddit user DeadUser00 posted in the r slash tip of my tongue subreddit asking about a movie they saw on Nickelodeon when they were young. Apparently in South America, Nick would show non-original short films, and this one caught the OP's eyes because it was just a lot darker compared to others. After a while and a ton of movies that were similar but not the right one, Blame It On Jorge would make a video on this and it would ignite the search yet again. Currently, a movie has been found that OP is certain is the same movie, but can't prove it was on Nickelodeon. However, he's starting to think that he might be mistaken about being on Nick, and it was actually on another channel with a similar name. Like I said, Jorge has a great video on this, so if you were interested in this and want to know more, definitely check out his video. Otis is trans. Otis from Barnyard is a male cow. However, Otis also has udders. I don't think I really have to explain anything. Prometheus and Bob movie. Prometheus and Bob is a Kablam short, uh, and during the production of the third season of Kablam, a live action film adaptation of the popular short was announced by Nickelodeon movies, but the movie fell through because of lack of interest and some issues with the original right holders. Stewie the Dog Boy spinoff. Stewie the Dog Boy was another Kablam short that was going to get a full show. However, it was dropped because Disney's Teacher's Pet aired on ABC and it was a very similar show, so Nick just thought it wasn't worth making a knockoff of that show. 
Never draw the same face twice. This was a rule made for the Ren and Stimpy team, and while people do talk about it as if it was super literal, most things show that it was more meant never use stock or basic expressions. There's stories even of John K forcing people to redo frames because the face looked either too basic or, as he would say, he saw that face before. Nick Cross Save Three THQ Nick games, specifically Nicktoons Unite, SpongeBob SquarePants Lights Camera Pants, and Tack the Great Juju Challenge, have a cool feature called Cross Save. Uh, what it does is if your PS2 memory card, and only PS2 works, uh, if it has a save from one of these three games, and you play another one of the games on the list, you will unlock special things such as costumes, more health, and other just small little things. Shrek 2 Sneak Peek a bit before Shrek 2 released, Nick had a sneak peek of it where they aired the first five minutes of the movie. This wasn't a normal thing, and I know a lot of people remember it like as this huge deal, and I think they did hype it up a lot, and it was really cool. Lana Vale Lana Vale was an adult character in Hey Arnold who only had one speaking role, but that wasn't the original plan. Originally, Lana was said to have a crush on Arnold and would ask him to help out and make him very uncomfortable. It's unknown if they would have had her act super predatory or just uncomfortably friendly, but no matter what, she's still a predator, and that's a little fucked. Super Y Pilot Super Y was originally pitched to Nick with a pilot that looked very different. The pilot was actually greenlit by Nick Jr., but it ended up being canned in favor of Oswald. The pilot's now lost media and is still being searched for. We currently have some screenshots, the intro, and the entire audio for the pilot? but still no video. Bloody Gur. Bloody Gur was a small easter egg hidden within single frames of episodes in Vader Zim, and a few have been found, but apparently it's been hidden throughout the last 14 episodes, and most of them still haven't been found. Some people even wonder if they're actually in the episodes, or if they got cut out, or if Jonah Vasquez is just lying about them. We'll be right back with more Nickelodeon. Rated everyone. Danny Phantom, Jimmy Neutron, Timmy Turner, and SpongeBob SquarePants face the diabolical forces of the Syndicate. The battle is on. Nicktoons Unite, the video game. Scientific research has harnessed the power of the distant sun to bring you. It changes colors in the sun. Bad is this, how bad is that? It changes colors and it changes back. Nickelodeon. Space explorers are stunned. It changes colors in the sun. How bad is this? How bad is that? The Gat Cup tomorrow, today. Nickelodeon Solar Cat. Nickelodeon Solar Cat comes in three colors, each sold separately from Mattel. Now we're back with more Nickelodeon. <laughs> SpongeBob killed other shows. Many shows were mistreated by Nick. The biggest factor in this was that Nick wanted every show to become the next SpongeBob. If a show didn't blow up like SpongeBob, it would be canceled very quickly. So, really, you can say SpongeBob killed the shows. Nicktoons Network was for shows to die. It's well known that when the show gets moved to Nicktoons, it's just gonna be cancelled soon. It's because Nick knows that Nicktoons has a lower viewer base, and when a show goes there, it's guaranteed to do worse, so Nick has no issue with cancelling it and claiming that its views caused it. So we have one final entry on the iceberg, and before it I want to give a trigger warning. I will be talking about many topics, uh, they will be listed on the screen, because if I say them, I will most likely be demonetized. Um, if this is something that you cannot handle, then this is the end. Thank you for watching. Uh, you know, please go ahead and leave. If you do want to hear about this stuff and these people, then you can follow me into the depths. Nickelodeon Creep Club. This is a term used for the group of child predators that worked at Nickelodeon or worked near Nickelodeon for years. First on the list is Azelle Chanel, who worked at Nick and was convicted of child while at Nick. Next is Brian Peck, who worked on All That and ran a comedy boot camp. He was convicted of a child on a Nickelodeon set, and then after getting out and everything happening, he went back to work with other children. 
Not directly, but he worked on shows that had children on it, specifically The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Because the way his whole thing worked is that while he couldn't work directly with children, didn't mean he couldn't work on things that involve children. Then we have Mighty Wise, who was a former manager that had clients who worked on Nick's shows, also convicted of a child. Then we have Jason Handy, a production assistant on All That and The Amanda Show, and he's a convicted And last two have their own entries. John K. He's the creator of Ren and Stimpy. It was well known outside the industry that he was a very sexual person. I mean, many of his Ren and Stimpy female characters were heavily sexualized, uh, but that wasn't the end of it. No, John K. had multiple child girlfriends, whose names I will not be saying. These girls were people who looked up to John and would contact him in hopes of becoming a cartoon maker themselves. He would bring them to LA, groom them, date them, and even them. This was very well known within the company, by the way, and the industry. Nickelodeon did nothing to stop it. And they only fired him when he wasn't making episodes quick enough. They didn't care about the other stuff, they only cared about the episodes. If you want to hear more about this, uh, Blame It On Jorge, yet again, has a great video that dives deeper into this. It has interviews with people who experience this, and it just makes it all in a much better timeline. I highly suggest if you want to know more about the John K incident, go watch that video. And here we are. I'm sure all of you knew this was coming. The big one, Dan Schneider. Dan was a producer at Nickelodeon who helped make some of Nick's greatest live-action shows. Drake and Josh, iCarly, Zoe 101, you name it, he probably made it. Now, it's obvious looking back that something was up with his productions. I mean, many of them had very strange sexual jokes with teenagers who were not of the age. Uh, many jokes that focused on feet. And this is uncomfortable, but it doesn't prove anything. However, we have a lot of people who have come out and talked about how Dan Schneider acted inappropriately with them. Along with talk of the comedy boot camp he held at his house, where kids would go alone and take classes. Uh, their kids were almost always discovered by the pool. These kids were 13 to 22. There are multiple accounts of Dan and young actors on set. Many people would know that this happened and do nothing. He would have kids come into his office without shoes, have them run around while filming them as an audition. Quotations around that. Uh, and there's just so much more to this. Multiple people have come out and talked about it, along with tons of pictures of him being way too close with girls who are 13, 12, and it's just creepy. Finally, yet again, Blame It On Jorge has a great video on this topic. Uh, if you want to know the full story, he does it. He talks about it, um, and you should watch it. The main thing here is that this was going on for forever, and no one did anything about it. Nick finally parted away with him in 2017, but it's too little too late. And so that is it. That is the end of the Nick Iceberg. I have spent way longer than I should have on this video, um, but I did it. I, I finished it, and it's out, and you're watching it, and I can't thank you enough. I started last year no the year before with like 130 some subscribers and then i released the spongebob iceberg and it blew up and it's insane it was absolutely insane and i don't expect this to even get half as many views as that that is at 1.5 million views as of time that i'm i'm recording this right now so that's insane um but, but yeah I, I can't thank you guys enough you have made it to where i can actually like i, I get an income from this dumb little thing I do and it's it's no longer just like this stupid little hobby that I did in high school people are like oh you're still doing that and I'm like yeah I make money now and they're like holy shit and it's great it's validating <laughs> and yeah and I couldn't do it without you so yeah I just can't thank you guys enough uh you made all this possible Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. This was uh, 40 some minutes, almost almost an hour long iceberg video. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you all next time. And there will be a next time. I will be making videos again. Maybe not an iceberg, but I'm back. Trust me. I love you guys. See you later.